together from verse 25. John chapter 9, we read together from verse 25. He answered and said, Whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I know is that I was blind and I was. One thing I know is that I, I was blind and now I see. May the good Lord and the blessing of the living of His Word. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for allowing us to open your word. We don't have the necessary capacity to interpret it. But we pray for the ministry of your Holy Spirit. This is your time. Speak to us. That's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I think many things have been said about the book of John and I just want to say also a few things about the book and we can get to the text. This is John's thesis to defend his stance with Jesus. Unlike Mark, Luke and Matthew, John is not a coward. He's clear that God or Jesus is God. For Matthew plays around and he says he's a king. Mark plays around also and he says he's the son of God. Luke also is a coward and he wants to present Jesus as a social activist. Mm -hmm. uh, but John begins his book by writing this and he says, In the beginning there was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. But John, I want to also submit something this morning that already your thesis has a problem. For if you are to say in the beginning he was God, for God has no beginning. But so John continues to write his thesis to present to us that Jesus is God. And for him to present as Jesus as God, John has to present Jesus doing God-like things. And so throughout the whole thesis, John does not have to narrate his book like Matthew, Luke, and, and, and Mark. So he has to write the book defending his thesis that Jesus is God. And if he's God, he must do God-like things. Amen. And that's why the miracles that John records are not ordinary like Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And so Mark or John chapter 9, John chapter 9 comes to us, friends, as an exegesis of John chapter 8. Okay. Because if you read from John chapter 5 throughout to chapter 8, there are three festivals in which Jesus attends. The first festival is in John chapter 5. It is the festival of the Sabbath. Okay. And there the symbol is the Sabbath. It's actually, or the symbol is work in the Sabbath. Jesus comes to that festival and defiles the whole thing. And he says, I will work on the Sabbath, for I am the Sabbath maker. Yes. And so he works on the Sabbath. And so throughout the whole book, John must defend his thesis. This is God. And if he is God, he must do God-like things. And so the first festival, Jesus deals with them by substituting the symbol with himself. Okay. The second festival, it is the festival of the Passover. John chapter 6, 7. There, in the festival of the Passover, where the symbol is the bread, which represents the manna from the captivity of Egypt. And so, in John chapter 6, Jesus says, I will replace the symbol with myself, for I am the bread. Amen. He says, I'm not only the bread, but I'm the bread of life. Deals with them by substituting the symbol with himself. John chapter 8. The location is in the temple. There in the church, Jesus says to them, I am the light of the world. And before Abraham, I was, before Abraham was, I was. Then they said, it's enough. From chapter 5, you've been dealing with us, replacing symbols with us. Actually, this is so 
social theological politics, they have a problem with Jesus. Because Jesus has a tendency of defining religion and substituting religious symbols with himself. Mm-hmm. And so in chapter 8, they are angry. They chase him out of the church. Mm-hmm. How do you chase out the head of the church from the church? Mm-hmm. So when they chase Jesus out of the church, when Jesus gets out of the church, John chapter 9, he meets a blind man. Mm-hmm. Remember in chapter 8, he says, I am the light of the world. In chapter 9, he says, he meets a blind man. In actual fact, John chapter 9, the blind man is the manifestation of the state of the church. So when Jesus gets outside the church and sees a blind man, he says, for me to prove that I am the light of the world, to show the church that the church is blind, I will have to make this illustration to this man. So when he gets outside the church, when he gets outside the church, there's a blind man. And the blind man is there. Okay, if you have been to a, a, an eye doctor, an eye doctor, you've been there. For, for them to, to actually check the, the quality of your eye, they will have to point a light towards the eye. And if you are struggling to see the light, then you have an impediment. In other words, even the doctors of the world simply also submit the suggestion of John chapter 9 to say actually they could not see the light in chapter 8. So if they could not see the light in chapter 8, then it's not only the blind man who's blind, but the church is also blind. And so when Jesus gets outside the church, and he says, oh, remember, before he could actually do his thing, the disciples also are, are troubled by the state of the men. They start also to discuss. And I think also I should just make a nugget here that pastors also have a tendency of interfering in things that don't want them. So, so the disciples, the disciples are the disciples are asking a question to Jesus. Jesus, this man has just been chased out of church. He's coming from a horrible experience. Have you been victimized religiously? Have you been, have you been victimized religiously? If you've not been there, I've been there. I know. And so Jesus has just been victimized religiously. He's outside the church. He's an outcast. Outside the church. There's a blind man. And the disciples are asking him, listen, Master, who sinned? This man or his parents? For the disciples think that the condition of the man is actually a problem of hematology. And so the Bible says, Jesus says to them, wait a minute. Okay. This man did not sin, nor his parents sinned, but he is blind so that the glory of God can be manifested. Listen to the preacher this morning. Some of your problems are an investment for the glory of God. Yeah. Now preacher, turn right here. That some of you are going through cancer not because you have sinned, but God has an investment for His own glory to be revealed. Some of us are suffering today not because we have sinned, but God has deposited an investment for His glory to be revealed. Some of you have came into this place, you did not know how to arrive. Tears were flowing. When you go back tomorrow, you are going back to the same problem. But hear the words of the preacher. Your problems are an investment for God's glory to be So the Bible says, so the Bible says that Jesus, after he tells them that, remember it's actually to feed John chapter 8. He says, come brother. The Bible says he spits. Problem number one. Remember, John, the whole book of John, it is to present Jesus as God. 
but John makes this writing very clear that when Jesus spit on the ground, it did not turn into mud. It turned into clay. The Bible says it takes the mud or the clay places it in the eyes of the man. Remember, the reason why Jesus turns the mud into clay, it is because Jesus is not fixing the man's problem. But he's creating the man's sight. So John chapter 9, John chapter 9, Jesus has to go to Genesis chapter 1 to present that he's God. So when he spits, he becomes it becomes clay to symbolize to us that this is God. Transcendent, a transcendent God that became eminent, and that's why John chapter 9 has to correlate to Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, there was the word Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, there was God. So, throughout the book of John, there's a man who has become God. So, when he spits on the ground, it becomes clay, not because the man. So Jesus has told us to show that the same way we create intelligent and actual fact, this is what as he said this. So Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, they create. John chapter 9, Jesus says, I was there when we created. Yes. So I have no problem of giving this man sight. Okay. Like, I've been throughout the process of creating. And so I create in John chapter 9 also this man sight. Remember, he was born blind. Yes. So, so we're not fixing. We are creating. But the Bible says, come, 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 come closer. But wait a minute, Jesus. This man has a problem. Why are you pouring clay in his eyes? He's blind. You're making him more blind. And so Jesus, after he does that, he says, go and wash in the pool of sin. You are not giving him directions. You are giving him instruction. He's blind. And I don't want to add things that are not there in the text. So there was no one to export the man to the pool of sin. There was no man to export this man to the pool. So in other words, this man, remember, this, the Bible is clear. There was no one who exported him outside the temple. He had no companions. Okay. He was alone. Okay. So when Jesus says, go and wash in the pool of silver, there's a blind man who is clay. In other words, this is Jesus trying to show him that this man has lived with this condition and I'm sure he has become so comfortable in the condition. So I want to limit him so that when he goes and washes, he understands that he did not arrive on his own abilities. It's simple. One day. So one day, I get invited to a church. I'm just a village boy. So I arrived at the airport. The elders were too busy in that church, but they had affluence. And so they said to me, Pastor, we will not fetch you, but we have just um, made provisions for you to arrive at the car hire. Um, just tell them which one you want. That's so why get a German machine, please. So I, I arrived to the desk and they gave me the keys and I was ready to go. I was supposed to preach maybe 45 minutes from the airport towards the local church. And I said, Elder, I've received the car, so what do I do? I said, uh, I've sent you instructions of the address to the location. Got into the car and I was ready to go. I did not know where the place is. Come on. I put the GPS in my, on the highway as I was traveling. Hey, my uh -huh. Cars oh. around me. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Driving with each other. Oh. Little did they know that I did not know where I was going. Yes. But I was assisted by something that they put into the car. Oh, 
So immediately I left the, that thing they pushed in the car. It says, Ten left, ten right. Drive 100 meters and you will turn left. Take your right, drive straight. Those who drive around me think I know. But I did not know, but there was something within the car. So when the boy leaves the temple, go watch at the pool of Silo. There was something within him. Listen to the pathfinder. Turn left, turn right, right about there. Listen to the voice within. Listen to the voice with it. Ten left. Ten right. And the blind man walks to the pool of Silo. When he gets to the pool of Silo, he's still blind. But how did he accept the water? Because the same man was dealing with defining symbols. For he says, I am the water. Of life, don't shout to fall. So when when the boy arrives, something with him says you have arrived by the pool of Silo. So when he gets by the pool of Silo, he remembers that he says, Go and wash. Go and wash by the pool of Silo. So the boy picks up water, starts washing his face. Remember, he's not been fixed. He does not even know how water looks like. But the boy is in the process of creation. So as he washes, the boy's eyes can see clearly. And after that, he could see clearly. And just like the songwriter, the boy says, "I, Amazing grace. How, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. For I once was lost, but now I am found. So after that, he turns back towards the church. Remember, because of his impediment, he was also an outcast like Jesus. They would not allow them in the temple. They would allow them to be outside the temple. Be careful of religion that does not have transformation. It always wants people to be perfect around us. It always wants them to be perfect and looking good. And I say this to the Adventist church. Be careful of your religion that does not transform the lives of people. For this. And so the Bible says, friends, so he gets back. As the young boy gets back. It does not find Jesus and the disciples. Ah. It finds the religious people. Yes. And they start to debate. Is he not the one? Oh, <laughs> Who was blind? How? How did he see? Can I say this, friends? There are people who are worried about what we were. Than what we are. Have you seen them in church? Uh, this one is the one that was a drunkard six months ago. Even in the church, but for them to appoint you, they will have to first dissect and see whether your situation has changed or not. They are worried about what he was. So they are talking about his condition and, and they are not actually happy for him they even go further to say who <laughs> but they are asking this who <laughs> who took away your problem the man says he does not answer that question he says, I was blind. But you ask you who? And the man says, but in the who? There is the how. But in the how? There is the who. For he is the word of God that became flesh. So you can't ask me who. I don't know who he was. I was blind. But I know how he has done 
you know, come on. I don't know how I made it to this pulpit, but I know he took me from somewhere. Don't ask me how. Don't ask me who. Don't ask me how. I know that I was blind, but now I see. You should turn away the last. Yeah. It's closer, it's closer. Oh, we're fine. <laughs> Listen. So, so I grew up, I grew up. In the first Advent mission of Africa, and the mother of all Advent missions, Solos University in the West of Blah, and they said that you can't preach without telling a story. So, a couple of, uh, there's a story told about an old couple, young teenagers that met in the old Putachwana region that suffered from human cravings. They met and they gave birth to a boy. Two years down the line, the father died and the young lady was left to raise the son alone. The son did not know the father. As the young man grew up, he knew just two things about the father. He was a soccer player and he was a drunkard. So the young man wanted to be like the father. So when he walked around the street, people said, he's like the father. And he started to drink to just associate with the image of the father. At a very early age. So the young man grew up picked up the bottle and that was something that he was known for. So one day the grandmother of the young man meets the young man in his drunk state. She looks at him and he says, she says to him, when you were born I said you'll become a pastor. And you will not be like your father. So, when the young man woke up the next morning, he remembered the words. I was not born to be like my father. <laughs> the young boy decided to take and change his life around. And the young boy is preaching to you today. So, I don't want to tell you a story that I don't know what I read. I want to tell you a story about my life. A young person that seated here, you know, I used to, I used to be worried, Pastor Ende, of telling my testimony. Yes, sir. Lest I would want to become a president and they victimize me. Come on. But now I'm no longer worried. You can keep it in your archives. I have no interest. Yes, sir. I just want to speak to a young person. Come on. That think that the grace of God is not sufficient for them. If you want a product of grace, look at me. I want to pray with someone this morning. I want to pray with a young boy that says, I need also to wash by the pool of sin. Yes. Someone who says, I'm going through, I've given my life into alcohol and drugs. I cannot go back home to those same problems. Yes. This Congress might be for you just for your life to change. Yes. And God is so selfish that he made all of us together here yes. so it can have an appointment with you. I want to pray with the young boy who says, Lord, do something with my life. Yeah. I am lost, but now I feel that I am found. If you are there, please take a step for Jesus. Jesus, baby, Lord. Oh, come, come, my young man, come. If you are there, he says, I need to wash by the pool of silver. Come. This is your moment. This is your moment. This is your moment. This calling is very special. It's not for ordinary. This calling is not ordinary. So one people who are serious who says, I don't want to go back home the same way I came. Who says, I want to wash by that pool of silver. 
if you are there, please take that step for Jesus. Come. He says, I will not go back home the same way I came. Come. 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 You know yourself and you say, I cannot go back home the same way I came. This is your God. Someone who says, I need to offer myself to that pool of silver. If I had authority, I would say to him, prepare water for baptism. If I had the powers. Come. You know yourself and you say, I was lost, but now I'm found. Come. If you could do it for me, I will do it for you. If God can do it for me, He will do it for you. Come. He has paid it all. He has paid it all. Don't worry. You can't go back to that addiction. You can't go back to that issues that you come, come, come. This is your moment. This is your moment. Come, my brother, come, my sister. Come. Jesus is calling. Let them ask you how or who did it. And you tell them that I once was blind, but now I see. Young man, young lady, I don't stand here because I've read this thing, but I've seen what grace can do. When you go to where I come from, they will ask you two things. Do you want to know who he was or do you want to know who he is? Yeah. So, I know what God can do. I stand here as a victim or as a product of grace. And I don't want you to miss that opportunity. 
Young men, don't sit there. It's, it's meant to destroy you. Young lady, you are in that thing because something happened in your life and you have not forgiven yourself. Don't worry, come. This is your moment. This is your moment. Take that step for Jesus. Ignore everything. Ignore social media, ignore your social standards, ignore. At this moment, you just take it between you and Jesus. We are about to pray. And you are there. Hallelujah. Come, my sister. You are there. And you say, I cannot. I cannot. I refuse to go back home the same way I came. Amen. This is your moment. And God has set it apart just for you. God says, I refuse that you go back home the same way you came. As we sing, move from that chair. And come. Jesus, Jesus, Stop saying they are coming to Jesus.
Singene singena wo amagama singeluto. Sipuma baba sembete ikama elisha nika Jesus. Singene baba sikuele udara. Kora ngenga yekazlako sipuma la sifrope sifazigile. Sia bonga Jesus. Na babandu na bako. No one placed a gun to their head to say stand up and go to Jesus. They stood up on their own because there was this thing that kept pulling them towards Jesus. Like that man who washed in that pool. That man who was hopeless. That man who had never seen the sun. That man who had never seen the beauty of color. But that man who washed by faith in that pool. And when he did that, the particles of mud kept falling from his eyes. We are told today that you did not fix his problem. You created a new reality in the life of that man. For the first time, when he obeyed, you created in them a new person, a person with a testimony. These children who stood up today, you are recreating them. You are planting something in them. The preacher says, look at me. I am a walking miracle, a byproduct of grace. I am a living testimony of what God can do. I was once hopeless, helpless, until I met Jesus. He is affording everyone today the same opportunity. Look at me, he says. Oh, Jesus, thank you. I have observed him, Father, growing up, listening to him, to what he has become, what you have created in him today as he preaches to us. And I say thank you, Jesus. There is hope for all of us here. And these that have stood up, I pray for a special anointing upon each one of them. I don't know what context they come from, but you do. Jakulega, Eva. You are shares again, sir. More. I want to know about me. I want to be Umbugi. Who called a geliato? Eva Kazik. It is so bad. So bad. Must be an app and an app. Bala, the Macama, which you call. Come the part of the corner about your face and get a man's in. Your face and get a man's in. And make a practical commitment. Your face. Uma be called at your home, Bala Maca. Deploy angels right here. Let them mingle with us. Let them take their names. Umuze lano lusu umaibi zwa maka. Obobonga bae matemba ka. Na abola ba basabe ni bati nami nikola. Si atroba za baba. Malwekele tobo. Ulo 
Put it on the radar of heaven. Either for the a circus cart, Baba. There's no more time. We don't have money just to come here to be entertained. We could meet an art. We see some of our own. See, she are in Billows. As I can say, what Jesus was saying. Before and you want to renew your vows with Jesus to the baptism. And the sacrifice of the You've been baptized, but you are and you want to renew your life with Jesus. Saumbe, you're not baptized yet. And they are facing getting a zeal. They are both powerful. Special prayer. Special prayer if you want to be baptized, or if you want to be baptized, Kamusha, or for the first time, or for the Sunday, you just go to do a special prayer.